The photoelectric effect is a way to use light to knock electrons out of a metal. The photons of light have energy equal to HF. If the photon can bullseye an electron, that photon can give the electron all of its energy. And if the energy of the photon is great enough, that electron will go flying out of the metal with a certain kinetic energy. Here's the weird part, the kinetic energy of the electron will not equal the energy given to it by the photon. If the photon gave the electron 10 units of energy, that electron might only come out of the metal with 8 units of kinetic energy. Where did the missing 2 units of energy go? Well, it turns out that it takes energy just to remove the electron from the metal. That's why electrons don't typically leave the metal in the first place. The minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a metal is called the work function. Each metal has its own specific work function which tells you how hard it will be to remove an electron from that metal. Think of it this way, say there's a red ball sitting at the bottom of a ditch. If you want to get that ball out of the ditch, you're going to have to give it energy. Say you give it energy by throwing a blue ball at it. If the energy is big enough, that red ball may come flying out of the ditch with a certain amount of kinetic energy. But that kinetic energy is not going to be equal to the amount of energy the blue ball gave the red ball. Part of the energy the blue ball gave the red ball goes into kinetic energy, but part of it goes into the potential energy required to bring the ball out of the ditch. This potential energy that a red ball needs to get out of a ditch is analogous to the work function of a metal. So, the kinetic energy of an electron flying out of a metal is going to be equal to the energy the photon gave the electron, HF, minus the work function. We should be careful by kinetic energy, we really mean the maximum kinetic energy an electron could get after being knocked out of the metal. Every term in this equation is an energy and has units of energy. But be careful, whatever unit of energy you choose, that has to be the same unit you use for each of these terms. In other words, if you give the kinetic energy of an electron in joules, you've got to express HF in joules and phi, the work function, in joules. If you do use joules, the numbers are going to be very, very small. So another unit that people find more convenient to use in this case are electron volts. Don't forget that 1 electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. For example, say the work function of this metal was 2 electron volts. If the photons hitting the metal carry an energy of 6 electron volts, that means the electrons will come out with a maximum kinetic energy of 4 electron volts. But what if you shine photons that carry energies of 2 electron volts at the metal? you'd get that the kinetic energy equals zero. This means that the electron was taken out of the metal, but it's not going anywhere because no energy was left for it to have any kinetic energy. This minimum energy required to take the electron out of the metal is called the threshold energy, which is equal to the work function. The frequency associated with that threshold energy is called the threshold frequency. And the wavelength associated with that frequency of light is called the threshold wavelength. One way to measure how much kinetic energy an electron has is by figuring out how much voltage it takes to stop that electron. Say there are two metal plates and you hook them up to a battery of voltage V. The electron has kinetic energy, but as it approaches the negative plate, it slows down because it's repelled by the negatives. If you make the voltage of the battery big enough, the electron will actually stop and turn around before it hits the plate. This minimum voltage required to stop the electrons is called the stopping potential. Using conservation of energy, the electron starts off with kinetic energy. To find out how much electric potential energy the electron starts with, let's assume that the negative terminal of the battery is at zero electric potential. That means the positive terminal of the battery is at electric potential V. The positive plate's hooked up to the positive terminal of the battery, so it's also at electric potential V. And since the negative plate is hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery, its electric potential is also zero. Since the electron started near the positive plate, it starts with an electric potential energy of Q times V, or in other words, negative E times V. It's negative E, the elementary charge, since this is an electron. We're assuming the electron stops, that's why it's called the stopping potential, so its final kinetic energy is zero. 
And since the electric potential at the negative plate is zero, that means the electric potential energy of the electron is also zero at that point. So the total final energy is just zero. So if we solve for the stopping potential, we get that the stopping potential equals the kinetic energy of the electron divided by the magnitude of the charge on the electron.